Okay, you're good to go, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Good evening, folks. Welcome to our August 2nd regular council meeting of the Township of South Mungary. Moved by Martin Lang, second by Sam McDonnell, be it resolved that the August 2nd regular council meeting of the Township of South Mungary now be opened at 7 p.m. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, now ask everybody to stand for the playing of our national anthem. very much. <clears throat> Item three, disclosure of pecuniary interest. Are there any? I have a disclosure on staff report. Um, I lost it here. I apologize. Uh, Madam Clerk, I will disclose that at, as the report comes along. There was a lot of them and I apologize for not writing it down sooner. Um, okay. Moving on to item four, approval of the agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or amendments? Through you, Mr. Mayor, we have a, a number of items that have been requested to be moved from the consent agenda to um, items for consideration. Those being items 9B, the corporate services departmental update, 9G, the second quarter building permit activity, 9J, the Child Care Worker and Early Childhood Educator uh, Appreciation Proclamation. Item 9K, the redistribution of uh, the Electoral District for North Glengarry. And item 9M, the resolution regarding the physician shortage. Okay, thank you. And I will be declaring a conflict of interest on 8C, uh, just for, uh, for clarification purposes. Moved by Sam McDonnell, seconded by Stephanie Jaworski. Be it resolved that the council of the township approve. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, um, before you proceed, you do have to state the reason for your um, pecuniary interest. Oh, my apologies. I was a realtor for the transaction on the sale of two lots created on 19001 uh, County Road 18. Thank you. Uh, moved by Sam McDonnell, seconded by Stephanie Jaworski. Be it resolved that the council of the township of South Lingary approve the agenda as amended. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, thank you very much. And moving on to the minutes. Moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Rebecca Luck. Be it resolved that the minutes of the July 18th regular council meeting, including the closed session minutes, be adopted as circulated. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, thank you. And moved by Rebecca Locke, second by Martin Lang, be it resolved that the minutes of the July 18th public meeting be adopted as circulated. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, thank you. Okay, moving on to presentations and delegations. Uh, I understand we have uh, a Parks and Recreation Master Plan uh, delegation. I'll hand that the floor over to you, uh, Ms. Servage. 
Good evening and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this evening we have our consultants, uh, Mary Catherine um, from Mahat Killian Associates and Mike and Jillian from Think Design. Um, they've been working on our Parks and Rec Master Plan uh, since late last year. They will be presenting on the plan process and some key insights as to what they have found and their recommendations. Uh, this, this document will provide strategic goals for the next 10 years and help us move forward in an efficient manner. Um, when reviewing the plan recommendations and budget, it's important to keep in mind that this is a working document um, and can be adjusted as we move forward. So we're not necessarily passing the budget that's in this plan for the next 10 years. It's, it's just a supporting document that goes along with it um, to give an idea as to what some of the projects may cost. So, however, these items will be uh, brought to council each year as we start to tackle them. Um, some items may change in priority and it will also be based on resources available. So um, also funding opportunities may change how items are budgeted for and where these projects land in the timeline. It's also important to have these types of items in a plan so that whenever funding opportunities do come up, um, we do have supporting documents um, showing that we strategically planned for them. So it does help when we're applying for grants. Uh, this plan will provide us a good outline for the next 10 years, I think. And uh, yeah, so it's just important to mention that it is a working document and it may be adjusted as we move along. So I'll leave it to um, Mary Catherine um, is our one of our consultants and she's supposed to be on, but I don't see her on here yet. Oh, there she is. Um, she's just joining. So um, I'll leave it to her to start uh, with the presentation and then Mike and Jillian will present as well. And then we'll have questions at the end. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, Mary Catherine, uh, whenever you're ready. You're on mute. Okay, sorry about that. It's always, that always happens at the last minute. Um, okay, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and members of council for inviting us to present the Township of South Glengarry's Parks and Recreation Master Plan. My name is Mary Catherine Mihak, and um, I'm with Mihak Kellen Associates, and I'm the lead, on, lead consultant on the project. And I'm joined tonight by uh, colleagues from Think Design, Mike Tucker and Jillian, Jillian Albert, who are part of our team in preparing the plan. So uh, we're each going to take some time to present some slides. Uh, so you won't have to listen to the same person for 20 minutes, and Mike is going to start. Okay, thank you. Um... I'm not sure if I have screen sharing abilities yet. So maybe if I can be granted that. You should be good to go. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mary Catherine. Um, and thank you, uh, Council, for uh, giving us the opportunity to present the uh, Parks and Recreation Master Plan. So I've got a, a few slides that I'm gonna just set the framework, and the, the overview of the study, and then I'll pass over to Mary Catherine to get into some of the specifics. But um, first off, just the purpose of the master plan. Um, but obviously, I guess it's to address the need for recreation programs, activities, and events, facilities, parks and trails, and development and their delivery to residents to the year 2032. Um, so it applies the community context, stakeholder input, and broader trends to assess local needs. Um, the plan makes recommendations for new improved services and the role of the township in facilitating community recreation opportunities. And finally, it provides a framework uh, or provides a time frame and estimated cost to implement the plan. So the following slides, um, as I said, provide the context for the master plan. So first off, it is important to remember that this is a 10 year master plan. Uh, so being a long term plan, uh, it is higher level and uh, should be considered a living document, so which that means is that many of the specific recommendations and details um, should be adjusted as necessary through the term of the plan. And this also means that each year recommendations may be advanced, delayed, or amended to address changing circumstances, and that some initiatives will require additional community feedback. 
especially when it involves developing detailed plans or designs. Now, of course, ultimately council and staff will determine when and how initiatives are implemented and the plan should undergo in a comprehensive update every 10 years. So the plan is organized into eight sections and five appendices. So sections one through three provide the context and summarize the community engagement process and the general trends in parks and recreation. And then while sections four through seven discuss the recommendations under the topics of programs, activities and events, facilities, parks and trails and service delivery. And then the last section, section eight covers implementation strategy in regards to budget and timing. Now, at the beginning of the project, the team gathered information on the specifics of South Glengarry, which impact parks and recreation. So this included looking at the geographic and social uh, demographics, inventories of existing programs, events, facilities, parks and trails, the role of town staff, volunteers and partners in delivering parks and recreation services, as well as current plans, policies and practices. And then finally, we looked at the broader trends in recreation services provision that apply to the South Glengarry context. Now, earlier this year, we completed a range of engagement activities to receive input from South Glengarry community. And this included first off the setup of management of an online engagement website. Um, and this was available for people to follow the process and provide their input during the study. We also set up a random telephone survey and an online survey. Now, both surveys were the same. And so while the 300 plus responses to the online survey is considered a good response, we also like to have a bit of a backup with a targeted random telephone survey to ensure that representative database, as well as the fact that responses to the online survey um, is typically beyond our control. So if we didn't get a good response, we always have a good, um, have the random telephone survey to fall back on. Um, a third survey was also provided to volunteer program service providers, and we conducted five focus groups, two sessions to address waterfront access, parks and trail use, and then three were held with representatives of volunteer committees. Now, throughout the study, the township promoted the plan and the opportunities to participate throughout the process through social media ads, direct emails to groups, uh, requesting their input, and this is all documented in the appendices uh, to the report and unsolicited input was also welcome throughout the process. So based on the review of existing situation, um, community input and current trends, we developed over 90 recommendations and an implementation strategy organized around the topics of programs, activities and events, facilities, parks and trails and service delivery. And finally, before I pass over to Mary Catherine, I want to point out that all of our recommendations were based on these following considerations. Uh, first off, uh, a current population of 13,330 with anticipated growth to 13,900 over the term of the plan. Uh, we also considered that South Glengarry's dispersed population with services provided across many settlement areas. Uh, that South Glengarry is primarily a rural agricultural community and the fact that Cornwall provides major recreation facilities and associated programs to South Glengarry residents. Um, South Glengarry has a good supply of services with some areas in need of development. And last, um, that there is an engaged, generally active community interested in and willing to support a range of parks and recreation experiences and facilities. So Mary Catherine, I'll pass it over to you if you wanna to speak to uh, key directions for programs and activities, events and facilities. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, as Mike mentioned, we developed, uh, well, 94 separate recommendations uh, and our, we've summarized them here into key service directions in each of the four areas that uh, service areas. And the first area is uh, programs, activities and events. So uh, this, these are some of the general overall directions uh, that came out of the report, well, there's more specific uh, recommendations. But we considered uh, sports, fitness programs, and non-sport fitness programs and activities. And examples of the first group um, include providing amenities for things like non-motorized small watercraft uh, sports as self-directed activities, uh, working with fitness program providers in the community to provide options for less physically intense activity, 
and encouraging the use of facilities for new activities such as field across, uh, ice stock sport, et cetera, et cetera, to demand care, and uh, it can be facilitated by the municipality. Examples of non-sport programs that people were interested in include things like visual arts, environmental um, programming, food-related nutrition, gentle wellness such as Tai Chi, and mental health-specific programs. So in uh, South Glengarry, uh, children, youth, and seniors are relatively well-served, uh, but there is a trend to growing interest in adult participation in municipal recreation. So we think more can be done here and also in intergenerational areas. Not to say that other you know, programs for youth, children, and seniors shouldn't be all redeveloped, but um, we're looking at maybe a little bit of a relative deficiency in adult and inter intergenerational programming. Next slide, please. Um, we talked about uh, future planning and provision of community and visitor attractive event, events because these types of events are now pretty much typical part of program supply in, uh, in communities. And so offers many events now for which the town provides considerable support, which, which puts pressure on limited resources. So the plan recommends reviewing and consolidating or streamlining the number types and nature of, event, of events through policy that kind of delineates what a community event is versus what a tourism oriented event is and clarifies the focus and support to be provided by the township in each type of event. Because in some particularly larger uh, visitor oriented events, you may, you may have to rely more on the county or other area municipalities to participate in provision of this, uh, larger events versus things that can be done for the community itself by the municipality alone in combination with uh, um, the volunteer groups that are interested in providing uh, program uh, events. So this could in the end mean uh, reducing involvement or adding resources to additional, to provide additional support to meet whatever intended work the municipality determines is needed in this area. Next slide, please. Um, now we're gonna talk a little bit about facilities. So um, all facilities and spaces that exist in the municipality are not is to capacity and there is opportunity to develop additional programs over the course of the master plan using existing facilities. The one, one focus that um, the plan re recommends is to update and look at the options, uh, including those that were proposed in 2011, as well as any new opportunities that might exist, have developed in the interim to determine whether an expansion on the existing site or repurposing the existing building without an expansion will meet needs for, for the uh, additional facilities and spaces in the arena. And if that is the case, update costs will have to be updated and to make a decision on a preferred option and move on to the next stages, which would be detailed design and construction. If it's not feasible to, to do what, um, the municipality wants to do, given the limitations of the existing site, it may, may require that um, you wait until funding becomes available for a new location and uh, building an entirely new arena. But that won't, that can only really be determined by doing more detailed work on the uh, existing, well, the previous, plus any new options that uh, would emerge, given uh, the engagement of engineers and architects to do that detailed work. And also Green Valley uh, Community Center in North Lancaster are now the responsibility of the municipality to not only maintain the program. So we're looking to uh, provide staff resources to work with the community to kind of reestablish these locations as um, centers of uh, community activity and programming. Next slide, please. Uh, with respect to the um, outdoor fields, the recommendations are largely directed at aligning supply with demand in terms of actual use. There's, um, there's, quite a, there's a, quite a number of fields that aren't being used or are not being used uh, to capacity. And if that, the determination of actual need in relation to supply can be established, then there will be a determination of what fields are not needed, could be repurposed or decommissioned, 
and then whatever fields are needed, and this is both diamonds and uh, soccer fields, you can focus on improvements to those facilities to make sure that they are um, optimally, optimally uh, working for the to use them. Next slide, please. Um, so for all facilities, whether or not they're, uh, they're looking, when community interest emerges, the municipality should really look to confirm demand in terms of monitoring and identifying what's needed and way of use before making um, commitments to implement. Everybody, um, or many people are interested in new facilities, improved facilities, but we really look to focus on establishing actual demand make to warrant uh, investment in because that that ideally works towards the judicious uh, use of resources um, and there are two facilities uh, the Norwesters and Royalist Museum and the Glengarry Celtic Music Hall of Fame that really should be uh, subject to some additional study to determine what uh, capital improvements are needed and to prepare a budget and a schedule for completion of these over the next 10 years. Uh, I think the next slides are Jillian's and she's going to talk about parks and trails. Hi, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk briefly about the parks and trails recommendations. Um, the plan has three general recommendations. Um, for the plan has three general recommendations, um, which apply universally to parks and trails. Um, and these are regarding accessibility upgrades, township branded signage and tree planting. So as part of ongoing maintenance and upgrades, the township should continue to make uh, required accessibility upgrades, such as providing accessible playgrounds and pathways. Um, in the plan, uh, specific accessibility improvements are provided for each park, and these are based on the township's 2021 um, accessibility implementation plan. Um, in regards to tree planting, it is recommended that a parks and trails tree strategy be developed to guide tree planting projects and tree management on township parkland. Um, this is in line with the existing tree canopy and natural vegetation policy, which aims to increase tree planting on township owned land within public parks where possible. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the plan proposed a parks classification system based on park function. The system has four categories, active, waterfront, natural or passive, and trails. The active park category includes the majority of parks in South, in South Glengarry. Um, an active park is defined as having facilities and amenities that support active recreation ideally for all ages and all year round. Examples include Smithfield Park and Paul Rosen Park. The waterfront park category includes parks or municipally owned access points located on the waterfront. Waterfront parks should support typical waterfront uses such as boating, swimming, and fishing. Um, examples for this include Kenneth Barton Senior Park and South Lancaster Wharf. Um, and the natural or passive park category includes parks used for functions such as nature appreciation, picnics and ceremonies and some active uses such as running and yoga. Examples include Bernie McDowell and Glen Gordon Park. And the fourth and final category of the parks classification system is the trails category, um, which is pretty self-explanatory. And um, this one includes the peanut line. Next slide. Um, so this classification system should be used when developing new parks. Um, the plan recommends the development of two new waterfront parks and one new active park. The active park will serve the neighborhood of Summerstown Estates. 
Um, Karen, Karen View Park, located in South Lancaster, will be developed as a waterfront park to serve the township. Um, and Glen Walter Regional, sorry, Glen Walter Waterfront Park will be developed as a waterfront park and will serve um, the community and as a rest stop for cyclists that are using the waterfront trail. Uh, next slide. Okay, um, now I'll speak briefly about park specific recommendations. Um, park specific recommendations are provided for 14 of the parks uh, and each have one to four recommendations. For instance, recommendations for Glen Walter Regional Park address community interest for a dog park, an outdoor rink and splash pad. Um, and the plan discusses how these will be um, determined based on when municipal servicing will be available at this park. For Green Valley, Jack Donahare and MP Proyer parks, upgrades and replacement um, of existing playgrounds are recommended. Next slide, please. Um, and recommendations um, were made for a number, uh, some recommendations were made um, for a number of different parks. Um, and these common recommendations include pathway loops, improved shade and seating, naturalization areas and tree planting. Next slide. Um, so lastly, um, the plan has two recommendations regarding trails. One is to conduct a peanut line trail study to resolve issues around use, access, and trespass through stakeholder consultations and to inform future trail improvements for the peanut line. And then a second study is recommended um, to be conducted uh, focusing on trails master planning throughout the township um, with a focus on active transportation planning. Um, and the difference for this uh, plan will, that will be, um, it'll be focused on connecting the township using trails. Um, so we found that South Glengarry, um, one of its assets, assets is that it has a lot of trail uh, like long extensive trails and trail areas that are well used. Um, so it would be beneficial to have them um, better connected um, and, uh, and in a way um, that allows active transportation um, to be uh, functional throughout the township. Um, so that's it for me. Okay, thanks. Um, now we're in the last uh, service area, which is service delivery. And I just want to talk about a few contextual variables here that kind of frame what we are talking about in terms of recommendations. So the current situation is uh, even though that the, even though the, the township's role is largely indirect in that it uh, provides support to community volunteers and other organizations in service provision, this role involves much in the way of practical day-to-day -day help in addition to facilities, parks and trails maintenance in order to make it happen. And as it stands now, the level of service is stretching the township's capacity to keep up, especially if community expectations are to continue to be met while further developing the services provided. Um, so this is a matter of, you know, trying to provide that um, facilitative role in supporting other people to provide programs, but also in keeping with the, the staff and the township's capacity to, to, to deliver those services and also grow them in the future um, as more services are added. Um, next slide, please. So what um, we're thinking would be a good first step is to conduct a, a review of um, the Parks and Parks, Culture and Recre Recreation Department operations delivery to uh, clarify the current situation with respect to department operations and determining potential for increased efficiencies. Uh, and once these are determined, how much more in the way of staff resources is needed 
to meet service needs if there are any gaps that are identified. Um, part of this work will involve reviewing and improving approaches to providing day-to-day -day services and determining the needs of, of uh, determining the details of needed agreements with community partners and municipal policies to clarify who's doing what with respect to uh, provision of services. And also to look at opportunities to in, develop programs to increase revenue generation, uh, including revisiting the proposed bylaw to incrementally increase the user fees that was introduced some time ago, but wasn't, um, wasn't adopted at the time. Um, many municipalities do this on an annual basis, so it's probably something that you might want to look at in the, in the upcoming in the upcoming uh, future, future next few years. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so we're talking here a little bit about uh, how, to, how to strengthen existing and new partnerships and collaborations and program and service provision. Now the municipality already does that with many, many existing groups and there may be other ways to um, develop those uh, relationships either by outreach to, to those um, groups or to new groups, and also continuing to respond to their needs as they approach the municipality. And we had some great feedback on the fact that the municipality is very responsive, very helpful, and always tries to support uh, re parks and recreation services in the community. Um, so one, but one way to explore uh, optional program models such as short duration programs and programs packages to develop activity is to um, like a short duration program is like a, maybe a three hour uh, class or a workshop on a Saturday afternoon and attract volunteers offer the first session and to test the market for that uh, interest. And if it draws participants, then maybe it becomes an ongoing program that the volunteer becomes the instructor for that program and gets some payment to deliver the program. So it's really part of a, a you know, volunteer first and then maybe become a, an instructor depending on how it goes. Uh, another way is to reach out to relevant agencies that specialize in services being considered. For instance, uh, we contacted the CMHC um, East and they indicated a definite interest in exploring potential to offer mental health programs in South Hungary. Uh, and then to the extent possible to di distribute programs, events, uh, parks and facilities across the township to continue to do that already because you're already doing that, to continue that, to balance supply and encourage uh, residents to come out and be active and, and interact and to optimize the use of services and improve location, locational access for those who can't travel far to go to uh, programs and to use other parks that are not near their homes. Um, next slide, please. So we thought, uh, we always ask if there are people in, in the community who are interested in volunteering. And there always seems to be, even though there is a difficulty these days getting volunteers, there always seems to be some uh, community who are interested in volunteering. And I think the um, master plan could be used to start a conversation with the community to find out who specifically is interested in working, as people indicated, working to source private sector funds or donors, uh, volunteering to help with programs, joining a volunteer stewardship group, or organizing and assisting with uh, local fundraising events. Those kinds of things could be solicited on the web on the town website and hopefully those same people will come back and provide their uh, uh, contact information so you can start that conversation with them. Um, so to align services with demand and those that are best able to offer them, we recommended instituting joint planning sessions with community partners to strengthen monitoring evaluation of programs and services with annual planning targets so you can measure what has been done and how successful it's been, you can report back to the community on that. Um, and also to continue, you have a good community guide and a website, but continue to uh, enhance that would be, uh, would be a, a good thing based on some of the feedback we heard. And also to um, allow others to participate in that, to expand coverage, to include uh, heritage and tours, and possibly to identify what's free to do in South Glengarry 
since some people thought certain yeah. things were, were, there was a fee attached to certain things like public skating when there isn't. So maybe that has to be publicized. What can we do without having to pay? Because that's an affordability um, benefit to some people. And then as Mike said earlier, to conduct a comprehensive review and update the master plan in 10 years. And I think Mike has a few more slides to uh, present and then we're open for questions. Thank you, Mary Catherine. Um, so yeah, just a few more slides um, on implementation. So section eight of the master plan covers the implementation uh, of the plan's 94 recommendations. And these recommendations are to be detailed and refined each year to align with specific tasks. Um, now, as described in the recommendation service delivery or SD28, uh, this plan includes an annual allowance of $80,000 for additional part-time staff to provide support in implementing this plan. So this is table uh, 8-1, which is found on page 152 of the master plan. And it summarizes the estimated costs for implementing the plan. Now this plan does not show costs for programs and events. So that's the, the top line there on the table. Um, and it does this because they, these recommendations are part of the ongoing operating costs and they cannot be identified as distinct amounts. Um, also, it should be noted that some costs are shown only as the first step in the process. So for example, only the cost for a study um, that will arrive at the cost to design and build infrastructure is included. And finally, none of the costs shown um, or those that may arise from other additional work consider potential funding opportunities. So in summary, um, this plan provides direction in all areas of parks and recreation services to the year 2032. Um, it is an important tool for planning and budgeting purposes. Um, as I said off the top, it must be viewed as a living document to be updated and adjusted annually with a major review and update in 10 years. Um, the recommendations contained in this plan may be advanced, delayed or amended to address changing circumstances. Some initiatives may be subject to additional community consultation. And finally, council working with township staff will activate the plan and determine if, when, and how the recommendations are realized. So thank you all for bearing with our 20 minute plus presentation. <laughs> and um, now we're open for questions and discussion. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I'm going to open it up to the floor for uh, questions. Uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Warden. Um, more, uh, it's more comment. Um, you know, first, I want to thank uh, the folks for joining us for uh, presenting the report, completing the report. We're not maybe a huge township, but we're blessed with you know many hamlets and many facilities and many beautiful areas. So any report that covers our whole township. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot to cover. So it's a lot of work. So I appreciate that uh, there's a lot there. And, um, you know, there's a lot of recommendations that are building on things that, you know, that we've already started or, you know, so there's kind of a line of sight on them already. And so it's nice to see that there's building upon that. But also, I mean, and I say for my speaking for myself in the service delivery section, there was a lot of ideas that I thought uh, perhaps were newer to me. And I thought that they're really good th things that we need to th think on some more about how it can help our staff be more efficient and how to sort of rebalance responsibilities and resources between our staff and user groups and how to properly document that so that it's clear. I think that that's something that can help empower our user groups because we have a lot of great user groups who really do want to um, participate. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, and it was sort of covered by um, uh, Ms. Servage at the beginning and yourselves as well in your report, is that uh, Again, we have a big township, and I'd say the majority of residents who don't live in Lancaster Heights, they don't really know much about Lancaster Heights, and the majority of residents who don't live in Glendale subdivision don't know anything about MP Poirier Park, too. So I think when we take the, the feedback that was given for those areas, we do have to take, I don't want to say with a grain of salt, that's not the right term, but I think it's that point about doing consultation, additional consultation for those areas, if we're doing something major there I think is so important because I would you know I would suggest that we perhaps in certain areas of our township don't have enough have 
did not, don't have enough of uh, the citizens' engagement yet to be able to start moving those forward. So I was uh, felt better by Mrs. Servage's comments earlier on about how, you know, this is a uh, it's a roadmap. It's not a plan that's set in stone, and that we'll be looking at it as we go. Because I think consult consultation is going to be so important to ensure that we are meeting the needs of the residents and also making sure that they're part of the pro uh, you know the end result. So thank you again. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Are there any uh, uh, Councillor Ling? I couldn't get unmuted for a minute. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. And thank you very much, guys, for your presentation. Uh, an awful lot of reading for us, but a lot of things for us to think about. Um, I think uh, we have an election year coming up, so hopefully uh, some of this can get dis discussed in the campaign and we can kind of see where residents are looking for us to go and which direction. But it seems quite obvious that since the start of COVID in 2020, um, people are looking to do more in the recreation department, more locally. They want to spend a little more time with family somewhere not too far away. And I think uh, this is a great start for us to, uh, to get moving on that. So thank you very much. Okay. All righty. Uh, so uh, we have a resolution before us, that report 118-2022. It's kind of tied to this presentation. Um, there's a lot on this. Uh, there's a lot in this report and it's going to guide us for a number of years. Um, I would like to postpone accepting it and uh, to the next meeting to allow council to read it more uh, in depth. Unfortunately, I did not have a chance to get through the whole report. Uh, it's 200 and something pages uh, with the Highland Games this past weekend. It was it was it was an active weekend. Um, so I'd like to to divert, def, defer it to our next council meeting. And I would also like to propose, uh, Madam Clerk, that we uh, convene a special meeting to uh, to discuss this matter at further length. Uh, I think. Uh, I think it warrants a, a special meeting on its own. Uh, we need, you know, uh, there's a lot of work to do. And I think uh, having a round table discussion amongst ourselves uh, with staff present, I think it would do this report uh, uh, justice. Madam Clerk. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Might I suggest a um, committee of the whole meeting to discuss this with our new procedural bylaw. We can have a uh, the committee of the whole meetings, which are a little uh, less formal and you can have a more open discussion. Yes, I would like that. So uh, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Uh, thank you uh, through you, Mayor Warden. Um, I certainly agree uh, that there's a lot here and um, I certainly had concerns myself about accepting the report um, in the sense that it gives the indication that we're committing to do everything in it. So I guess where I might suggest to what you're proposing, I might suggest that we actually receive the report, maybe not like change the resolution to receiving the report, and then we can move to another, you know, a next phase where a committee of the whole, where we could discuss, because I don't think we want the uh, consultants to be making changes to the report. I think now it comes to what we want to do internally. So I, I, I would make that uh, sort of uh, suggestion to what you're proposing. Uh, I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, Madam Clerk, are we able to change the resolution? For you, Mr. Mayor, you certainly can make a friendly amendment to the resolution. Um, I believe as it's written right now, I don't have it right in front of me, but I believe it says that uh, for council to accepted. receive and accept. Ex so yeah. you could just strike the um, accept part at the end and we could just uh, have that as a friendly amendment. Just a uh, plan be received by the township. Perfect. Okay, that's great. Um, are there any other questions or comments, uh, members of council at this time? Seeing none, I'd like to thank you all for coming uh, this evening and giving us a brief summary of your report. Uh, we have more work to do and uh, we want to thank you again for, uh, for putting the work in. Thank you for having us. Have a great evening. Thank you. Good night. Moved by Martin Langs, second by Sam McDonnell. Be it resolved that Staff Report 118-2022 be received and that the Parks and Recreation Master Plan be received by the Council of the Township of South Glengarry. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you very much.
And we'll move on to uh, staff report 119-2022. Mr. Mills. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, council, staff, and the general public. It's my pleasure to bring a report to you tonight regarding the Cornwall Electric LED streetlight conversion project. This has been a number of years in the making and council is very familiar with this file. In fact, I've uh, presented this to you in the past. Uh, we have discussed this over time. There's over 370 streetlights that are owned by Cornwall Electric in our township. We've uh, Cornwall Electric's agreed to sell those lights to us, at which point uh, we're uh, looking at conversion. There are a number of attachments in the report tonight, which include an asset purchase agreement, a general conveyance and assumption of liabilities agreement, agreement for use of poles, and agreement for mu municipal equipment attachments to Bell Canada poles. Uh, once those are, are signed off, we can then issue an RFP and, uh, and quickly, hopefully quickly get the work done. The approximate cost is uh, two, uh, over $220,000 and the, it would come from reserves. It's a good news story in that uh, it provides efficiency. We, we all know that LED lights require very little, if any, maintenance. And very, very uh, often they, they will last, uh, you know, certainly our lifetime. Um, over the course of three years at the most, we'll be able to repay those costs and it'll be a, a savings to the township and, and ultimately to the taxpayer. Um, so I'll entertain any questions right now. I want to um, thank staff who've invested a lot of time and in, in research in this. Well, there've been a lot of back and forth with Cornwall Electric and we're at the point now where we would like um, your support, council support, and then we can issue the RFP and, and get this file complete. Okay, uh, thanks very much, Tim, for uh, this report. It certainly has been uh, uh, on the agenda for a while. Councillor McDonnell, you had your hand up. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'd just like to thank CAO Mills and uh, all the staff that have worked so hard on this. This has been something that's been sitting on uh, this council's toes since our first budget. And uh, my opinion, it's, uh, I know we say it's a savings to the taxpayer, but <clears throat> as you said, Mr. Mills, it's a direct savings to uh, to the residents of Glen Walter and the surrounding areas there because those those street lights, the costs are completely recuperated by the township off of the the uh, ratepayers that actually benefit from those street lights. So this will be a direct savings to every person who lives in Glen Walter and the surrounding area who benefit from a street light. So I agree, it's taken way too long, and it's uh, that's not at the feet of the township. But uh, thank you very much for working so hard to get it done. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to second what uh, Councillor McDonough said. Thank you to all the staff who've kept at this through this whole process. And I'd also like to acknowledge Councillor McDonough because certainly I'd say on council, at the council table, he had a certain amount of passion for the project and also kept, kept it on our radar as well. So uh, thank you to you as well. Good. Councillor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Um, very good news story. It did provide us with a lot of reading, all the agreements that are uh, attached at the back of it. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna just kind of repeat what everybody else said, but I, I just, I have a question in, in as far as the agreements, have we had, uh, like are these a standard agreement that Cornwall Electric has with other uh, municipalities or is it written up just for us? Um, there was one thing in there that I had a little bit of a, an issue with in the agreements, and that was uh, the uh, application for occupancy. The, the details thing we have to, to fill out to be able to access a poll and, and, and to do so. I'm just wondering if that is has to be done every time, like to change all these streetlights, do they have to go through that process for every one? Or can be one for the whole thing? I'm just wondering if there's anything in that agreement that we need to be looking at closely. If we had any lawyers or anybody look at it for our, our side of it. For you, Mr. Mayor. So the, uh, in terms of working with Cornell Electric, they worked on, on their legal and we've ran this through our, our consultant who's worked very closely with the conversion of the Cornwall, uh, Cornwall project through Cornwall Electric and has done many municipalities throughout Ontario. So we're confident in the, in the agreements that are provided. 
All right. Thank you very much. I just, uh, the one just, and I don't understand it hundred percent, but that, that, uh, occupancy thing where we have to fill out every time we go to do anything was just a little concerning to me. So I'm hoping it's just for new installs and it's not every time we have to go change a light bulb, but all right. Thank you. I just, uh, add further through you, Mr. Mayor, that, um, the concern on that is, is kind of tempered by the fact that we're not going to have to do too much on any of the lights that they've been shown that they last there's very, very little maintenance at all once they're installed. Great. Seeing no other comments, moved by Sam McTonnell, second by Stephanie Jaworski. Be resolved that staff report 119-2022 be received and that the Corporation of the Township of South Glengarry enters into an agreement with Cornwall Street Railway Light and Power Company Limited for the purchase of street light fixtures that the Corporation of the Township of South Glengarry enters into an agreement with Bell Canada for municipal equipment attachments to Bell Canada poles. And furthermore, that the mayor and clerk be authorized to sign all applicable documents. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you very much for your work, Mr. Mills. Okay, there's a lot of pages in that. Moving on to 7C grant match service fees, Mr. Mills. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, through you again. This is a follow-up to the July 18th regular council meeting where I brought a report about grant match who we've worked with closely to obtain a number of grants in the last 10 months. We were seeking direction uh, from you to pay the consulting fees that were uh, to be paid to grant match. There's a fee structure there that I've already reviewed in the past. Just as a reminder to council, six out of the eight grant, grant applications that we submitted were approved worth almost $4 million. We, uh, the service fees are allocated from the general government administrative consultant fees account. And when you look down below, in number eight, 175,000 for 2022 needed to be reallocated to the administrative consulting fees. So uh, I've worked uh, closely with General Manager McDonald, General Manager Servage, and General Manager Hudson uh, to sharpen our pencils and to look in other areas where we can uh, pay for the fees. The listing there is in number nine, so $30,000 that we saved through the North Lancaster Playground project that was part of the 2022 budget. And we got a grant for that. Uh, similar, we got 20,000 or, or a grant for the bocce ball court at Martintown, which is now complete. And that looks great. Uh, we're saved $20,000 there. And then the further amounts, $20,000 from the Roads Administration Consultants account, 52,500 from the general reserve account and the Glen Walter water wastewater reserve account respectively. The, uh, as a side note, the reserve for Glen Walter sewer and water system is estimated at $328,000 as of today, pending the results of uh, the year end audit, which we'll, uh, we're presently completing, but we're confident in that. General manager McDonald and I they are uh, both on now to answer any further questions you may have it's another good news story in terms of the number of grants we've been able to obtain uh, thanks very much for your report uh, mr mills i guess um i think the main concern uh once it was presented to us at our last meeting was the fact that uh the portion of the cost for the work being done in the water sewer area needs to come directly from their reserves. And I think that's what you're trying to do, break it down uh, and, and figure out the exact number, correct? That's correct. Ms. McDonald, did you wanna add something? I do not. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you through you, uh, Mayor Warden. And uh, yeah, my understanding is the same is that, uh, and that was my concern last time is to ensure that consultant fees that relate to the water system are covered by the water system reserves. So, but it seems, and maybe I'm misreading this is like the, the one, let's say the, like it's 232,000 
the, of the grant match fees that are related to Glenn Walter. So is what we're doing here, is this sort of a paper exercise that in 2022, we're, we're reallocating it from these final account, these other accounts. And then in 2023, we're going to go back to Glenn Walt, the Gwen Walter account and then repay those other accounts. Is that what, I, what I'm reading here? What you're reading here is the approximate 175,000 through number 9A to E. Okay. We are required to pay 75% of the consulting fees once we receive the grant and sign the contribution agreement, which we have. The additional amount will be, have to be considered during the 2023 budget. Okay, but I don't, I don't, I, I don't think you're, I don't think we're achieving what council requested. Uh, we need to know exactly how much is owed out of the Glen Walter uh, funds, and that has to come out of Glen Walter. Um, the rest of this extra money that's still here goes into general funds, but uh, any any funds that are costing us for these services that are attributed to the water and wastewater have to come from that reserve. We can't charge other ratepayers for something they're not receiving. And I don't feel that this is achieving that. So through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I can answer some of this. Um, I, I do think that it is appropriate for the Roads Administration Consultants account to bear some of this since a huge part Sorry, let me flip that back. The, the water tower includes upgrading 4,000 meters of linear infrastructure, will direct, which will directly impact our roads and the roads will require some rehabilitation following pulverizing into them and, and replacing main under it. So there, there can be a case made that this grant will improve our roads all through Glen Walter um, and we'll be working through that in a bit. Uh, in terms of, and again, I believe this funding is and correct me if I'm wrong, CAO Mills, this funding is covering off all five of the grant, 75%? That's correct. Sorry. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> so in, in which case, the, the North Lancaster, and I believe Ken, Ken Barton would have a, a portion of it, um, and we will need to dip into general reserves to cover off the, the asset management plan fees also. So it's appropriate that all, all of those are captured and if you check out the recommendation, we have left the uh, the fields blank so council can debate and allocate as, as necessary and as they feel appropriate. However, our recommendation is in, in number nine and I suppose at this point it's up to uh, you folks and Mr. Mary called yourselves a keeper of the purse strings to, to make this final decision. Okay. Councillor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. What percentage of the 175 or whatever it is goes towards the, the like how much is the 75% that's owed for that water tower grant? Right. Just to be clear, that is, uh, that is all the water tower. 175 is required for the water tower. Out of the Two hundred and um, okay, twenty-five thousand, roughly. And that one seventy-five that is equals seventy-five percent of what we need to pay. The rest is due next year after our next year's in, out of next year's budget, or or when it's complete. Okay. Oh, so it may be over the course of the next three, four, whenever we get the water tower complete, and that's to be determined. So I think what council was looking for was the whole one hundred and seventy-five to come out of the Glen Walter Reserve. That's the way I understood it last week. I don't have a problem with the 20,000 from the Roads Administration. Uh, I'm fine with that. I feel like you can, there's some wiggle room there. I feel that's okay, but the rest uh, I feel has to. Uh, Councillor Luck then back to Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you to you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just curious, why was it that the um, the funds for the North Lancaster and the Ken Barton changed from one to the other? Like we had the 32 and the 2106 and that got reduced. I'm just, I'm just curious as to why. 
Uh, th three, Mr. Mayor, I can answer that. It's simply to make it easier to amend this on the fly instead of dealing with dollars and cents or even numbers, and it's easy for the clerk to um, to put in and you folks to debate. So I ran it up and down. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Jaworski, you had your hand up. Yeah, thank you, through you, Mayor Warden. And I think Councillor Lang sort of explained it very clearly as to where my head was at in terms, and, and, and perhaps I need to be disabused of, you know, some incorrect information, but my understanding is this was sort of like a legislative thing that spending for water has to be from the water, you know, come back to water rates. Like, I don't think, I did not think we have a flexibility to sort of, um, uh, sort of touch on these other, other reserve funds, but, um, but I, I, I guess I would concede, though, that what Ms. McDonald did explain in terms of how there might be some road impacts, that there would be, um, you know, it does make sense to take some out of um, a reserve related to roads. And how that would be split, that I do not know. But I would think that the, my understanding, and please, if I'm incorrect, um, please let me know. But my understanding is the majority of that 175 needs to come out of the Glen Walter Reserves. Okay, so I think I'm able to summarize it here for uh, council. So uh, we are gonna put a zero uh, Northland Castor Park capital expenditure account. We're gonna put a zero at the Martintown Community Center capital expenditure account. I'm fine with putting 20,000 from uh, the Roads Administration Consultants account, uh, zero from the general reserves and the, whatever the balance owing is out of the Glen Walter sewer water reserve account. Is that how I understood this staff report? It's your choice, Mr. Through you, it's your choice, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it's council's yeah, choice, council's not choice, mine. Yeah. But, yep. uh, council, uh, can I get a show of hands? Is that my understanding, Deputy Mayor Jaworski? That was my show of hands. Okay, sorry. Yeah, okay, perfect. So <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and read the resolution. Just a comment, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Uh, just that maybe we do double check before we do actually follow through with the uh, reallocation of those funds that we are, in fact, allowed at that amount uh, out of the roads department. Just because, as uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski said, I was fully under the uh, impression that that had to come solely from the uh, solely from the uh, uh, water and wastewater. If it had anything to do with the water and wastewater, I know we say there is a roads benefit there at the end of the day but if we weren't digging the digging the road for the water pipes were we really going to do the road so that's where i just want to get a confirmation that we're fine to do that a uh, very fair point uh councillor lang i would agree that we are okay to do it with at least twenty thousand. i do think there is benefits besides you know the benefit to the the users of the the system uh, the roads could be one. Um, the other thing is we will then have acting or working hydrants in that area. So then the surrounding area for her, you know, say I'm going to guess, you know, five, six miles, it will be a, an, easy, an easy source for us to obtain water, uh, you know, when uh, for the fire department, if those hydrants are working, like as at now we, we run often into Lancaster to fill up a uh, hydrant if we're not too far away. It just, it's a lot quicker than using a dry hydrant or, or, or pumping out of a river or something. So there would be benefits to the surrounding community a certain amount. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, those questions and comments. I'm gonna proceed with reading the resolution. Moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Rebecca Luck. Be it resolved that staff report 120-2022 be received and that the council hereby direct administration to continue working with grant match on a as need, needed basis to secure grant funding for capital projects resources and services, and furthermore, that council approved the reallocation of $175,000 to general government administration consulting fees from the following accounts. Zero dollars from the North Lancaster Capital Expenditure Account, zero dollars from the Martintown Community Center Capital, Capital Expenditure Account, $20,000 from the Roads Administration Consultant Account, zero dollars from the General Reserve Account, and uh, 155,000 from the Glen Walter Sewer and Water System Reserve Account. All those in favor of the motion? 
Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to 7D, disposal of used fire vehicle tanker. Chief Robertson. There we are. Good evening, Council, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the fire services fleet, we just recently, about a month ago, added a 2022 international water uh, tanker vehicle to the fleet. And in turn, we removed a 1997 GMC top kit water tanker. Um, with that vehicle being removed from um, the fire fleet, it's been removed from, removed from service. And as per past practice, um, we are ready now to uh, proceed with disperse, uh, disposal of it, dispersion. And um, this report is requesting council's uh, authorization for doing so. Um, the uh, vehicle up to, to this date, our most usual, our most used mechanism for selling used fleet vehicles would be through the GovDeals um, online website. Um, it's our intention, our suggestion actually, to do that with this vehicle. The, the sales value or estimating at a fairly low amount, it is a fairly old vehicle. It's a single axle, it's a gasoline engine. So we're not uh, anticipating a high sale value for that vehicle, but um, so our, um, our note would be that any funds from the sale of the vehicle would uh, result in revenue for the fire service reserves and the sale option will follow the pr provisions of bylaw 3607, this disposition of assets. So um, thank you. And if you have any questions, uh, I'd be glad to, uh, to ask, answer. Thank you very much, Chief Robertson. I think this fleet is almost as old as uh, Councillor McDonnell, <laughs> or older, <laughs> Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor Warden. Um, I'm sorry if I'm asking you to repeat yourself if I, if I missed this detail, but could you, um, Chief Robertson, please just expand again on why um, the vehicles not, could not be reused as, um, as a water truck within the road fleet? Sure, uh, thank you for that, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. We've had some comments and some discussion between roads and fire over the last number of years about the um, possible addition of water tankers um, when we deem them surplus to the fire fleet to uh, bring them into the roads fleet uh, for, for limited use, seasonal use, those types of things. We did um, review it with our, um, our um, fleet mechanic and our roads manager and uh, we Upon further investigation, it doesn't appear that this vehicle um, it will be of value. The, uh, it may cost us more money than we think would be uh, of value to, uh, to either bring it up to speed and uh, also to uh, modify it. So we've deemed it not worthy. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, moved by, thank you for your report, Chief. Uh, removed by Rebecca Luck, second by Martin Lang, be it resolved that Staff Report 121-2022 be received and that the Council of the Township of South Glengarry deemed the 1997 GMC Top Kick water tanker as surplus asset and that it be advertised for sale. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, thank you very much. And moving on to staff report 122-2022, Ms. McDonald. Thank you and through you, Mr. Mayor. This one is a, a quick request to you folks. Our sidewalk budget this year was currently allocated at $2,000 and this is not really enough for us to do anything. So in, in considering what we might do, uh, we let me take a step back. So we, every year we do a sidewalk condition assessment and that gives us a value for, for how much deficiencies we have in our sidewalks. Uh, we, we did one this year and we don't have the final report, but based on previous years, we're expecting it to be in a 65 to $75,000 range to you know, get our sidewalks to perfection. We don't need our sidewalks to perfection, but we do have some areas that have uh, significant trip hazards or just the entire panels are broken. And to do any of that work would, would cost us more than our allocated $2,000. So we are suggesting that $10,000 a year would be appropriate and asking that $8,000 be moved from the general reserves into our sidewalk budget to allow us to start in a multi-year plan. And 
I mean, if you folks don't go for it this year, I'll, I'll be back next year with the, the same request. So that, that's it in a nutshell. Perfect. Well, I hope the sidewalk very near to the arena gets fixed. Uh, I'm certainly in favor of increasing this to uh, 10. I'm not sure how that got through at 2000. Questions or comments? Deputy Mayor Chworsky. Thank you through you, Mayor Warden. And uh, thank you to you, Ms. McDonald, for bringing this to our attention. Um, clearly, if it came through at 2000, uh, we hadn't put enough, uh, you know, um, we hadn't looked at this one enough. So um, I'm glad to see that you've got it in hand and that you're going to get us to bring up the, the standards. Because when it comes to sidewalks, I mean, you're thinking about folks who have you know, reduced mobility, parents with strollers, uh, kids learning to bike on a, you know, a little bike where, you know, you're not going to put them in the street yet. I mean, the condition of our sidewalks really is important. It's not, it shouldn't be a, an afterthought. So thank you for bringing some attention to this and I am in favor of increasing it. Uh, Councillor Lynn, then Councillor Luck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Thank you, Ms. McDonald, for the report. Can you just clarify for me, if we put this 8,000 in, that brings it to 10 but it looks like in line six, you're saying that we did not draw anything from the 2020 or 21. So would that mean that we would have an additional uh, 15 that would bring us to 25 that we could do this year? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I do not know enough about how past budgets work to answer that question. And perhaps the CAO or treasurer could assist. My, my just thought, if we didn't take any, we budgeted uh, 10,000 in 2020, 5,000 in 2021, if we didn't spend it, it should still be there. And I think you'd have 25,000 to work with this year. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I suspect it was reallocated, but again, I would need support from finance to answer. Okay. Um, Through you, Mr. Mayor, yeah. Mr. Mayor, can I comment on that? So council will remember that for the 2020 budget year, when we came through with the audited statements that there was over a million dollars uh, under, we were underspent. There were, and and a, major, a lot transferred into the reserves and our reserves continued to grow. But to be specific and answer that to Councillor Lang, I mean, I, I don't have that, you know, in front of me, but to his point, there's, we have a healthy reserve and no debt. Um, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't need. I'm just. I'm just speculating here. I don't need that answer today to uh, to approve this uh, this request. I'm in favor of approving the request, but uh, it might be something for Miss McDonald to look into. I think she should have twenty five thousand to spend. Myself. All right. Uh, thank you for those comments, uh, Councillor Luck. I don't have any questions. I just wanted to say through you, Mr. Mayor, that uh, I'm definitely in favor of this. You know, price of concrete just keeps going up and up every single year. And uh, <laughs> the industry numbers that I'm seeing are just ridiculous. And um, to get this completed, even, you know, at a minimum is definitely something that I'm very um, passionate for. So thank you for bringing that forward. Okay, great. So uh, good discussion. I'm going to read the resolution as presented. And in the future, Ms. McDonald, if, if you feel like you need a top up further, uh, you, you'll remember this conversation and you can present at that time. Moved by Martin Lang, seconded by Sam McDonnell, be resolved that Staff Report 122-2022 be received and that the Council of the Township of South Hungary authorizes the one-time transfer of $8,000 from General Reserves to the sidewalk maintenance account. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you very much for your report. And moving on to staff report 123-2022, Ms. McDonald. Thank you and through you, Mr. Mayor. This report is to request the purchase of a, a wheeled loader. Uh, so this wheeled loader is construction grade. So it's you know the, the yellow orange color. It's not the agricultural grade equipment that would be green that we see out there. It is used and we are in a unique opportunity. We have a unique opportunity right now. A, a local gentleman ha has purchased it and it is available to us with no, no uh, freight or shipping for $100,000 plus HST. It was not budgeted for since we weren't, um, as you know, we don't have a roads asset management plan for our fleet. So we don't have, buyer has an excellent 
fleet asset management plan, and we hope to be there soon. Um, I've listed the other heavy equipment that we have in item three to give council an idea of what other fleet equipment might need to be upgraded or refreshed in the coming years when making this decision. In item nine, I've also provided the, um, the strength of our, what do we call it, the roads equipment reserve and our commitments against it to date, which includes our pickups, two tandems, um, and then I threw in my two staff reports for tonight so that you can I'll, I'll see how much might be left after that. This wheeled loader um, would be used during the winter to load our, our salt trucks and it would provide incredible efficiencies over the speed of our current tractor that we're using. Uh, from a health and safety point of view, it's definitely an improvement and in the summer we can use it for a variety of activities um, such as shouldering if we purchase the attachment. And that, that is the request as a consideration for this wheeled loader purchase. I will say we are allowed to borrow the county's shoulder attachment. We don't have to purchase our own. Uh, you'll have to speak up uh, with uh, Mr. DeHaan, but uh, I know that uh, approving that uh, earlier this year or last year, it is available to the lower tiers uh, with consultation and timing schedules. Councillor McDonnell, I believe you had your hand up. Then Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, I know having well, oh, being involved in uh, or working with a company that runs this kind of type of machinery and having run it myself, it's uh, in comparison to a front end loader like we've been doing, it'll be a world of difference uh, for the guys, which I know they think they've already gotten a feel for that and uh, using one in the past winter. Uh, to me, it's it's just going to add life to our backhoe and to our uh, or to our to a front end loader tractor that we've been uh running in the salt. And as far as the hours, I know they are high hour. It is high hour machine, but from the history I've kind of gathered on my own uh, on that machine, I don't think it's anything to worry about. I know in my business, if, uh, if a wheel loader ever made it to 10,000 hours, it would, it wouldn't be looking very nice from the inside or out. Uh, so just given the shape of that machine from what I've seen and from what I've heard in the history of it, I wouldn't be too concerned with the hours anyways. And, it looks like a decent machine that'll get us some good life. And like you say, there's there one thing about a wheel loader, the once you have one, there you find all kinds of jobs for it to do. So I'm sure it'll be well used. Thank you for those comments. Uh Deputy Mayor Jaworski, then Councillor Lang. Thank you Thanks. through you, uh Mayor Warden. Um, similar to what Councillor McDonough was saying, certainly like the customers I deal with who do materials handling, this is what they will, it's this type of piece of equipment that they're using both for its maneuverability since it's articulated and also like the, 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 the size of its bucket and how maneuverable it is. I mean, that's that, this is the piece of equipment if you're doing, you know, salt loading and that sort of thing. So I think it's probably, you know, it's going to be a better, it's a better tool overall folks will be more efficient and it's really the type of equipment we probably should have been using to start with so i think and you know for, the price seems very fair considering the age and the condition of the piece of equipment versus you know what we might if we were to try and find something new uh that is similar you know we'd be paying several times more so i think uh, i'm i'm in favor thank you okay thank you very much uh councillor lang then councillor luck so I won't repeat everything, but uh, I'm in favor. Um, very happy to see it has a quick attach so that uh, it does give us options in, in the future to be able to put different attachments on it. So I'm in favor. I think uh, we need to start uh, upgrading some of that uh, equipment. Uh, your list there shows a lot of old stuff. Thank you, Councillor Luck. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm so sorry, uh, Ms. McDonald. I, I wasn't sure, does this go hand in hand with the next report? Like, does this um, replace the tractor or would this be like in addition to our fleet? Excellent question. And three, Mr. Mayor, um, I, I will leave that to you folks. I'm presenting them as two separate um, yeah. topics of conversation. And it's, I know it's our, our folks' preference to have to have both. Okay, so right now as it stands, we're presenting this as we would be keeping the tractor and that this would join our fleet. Would we have uh, room, I guess, to store it if we are indeed going with like the two pieces of equipment? Mm -hmm. Through you, Mr. Mayor, we have uh, ample storage between our new Rhodes garage, our North Lancaster garage, and 
during the off season, we can store some things in our, our salt shed or outside. We have plenty of outdoor, um, outdoor storage area. Okay, thank you. It's my understanding we've been we've been renting this uh, this specific unit, so it's already been part of our fleet. We just don't own our own. Uh, Mr. Hudson, you have your hand up. Mr. Hudson, you have your hand up. Is that a mistake, maybe? Through you, Mr. Mayor, we're in the same office. Do you want me to go check on him? Yeah, please. I'll be right back. Excuse me. There we are. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yep. All right. Can't, through you, Mr. Mayor. You. I didn't want to use. Uh, I didn't want to leave the GM McDonald hanging or CAO Mills hanging on that question with respect to the sidewalks. I do want to respond to uh, respond to uh, Councillor Lang. It won't take me very long tomorrow morning. I was reluctant uh, this evening to make a comment because it involves several years of data. But I will do that in the morning. Um, uh, on another point, uh, the road equipment reserve stands at uh, approximately 1.3 million uh, currently um, subject to any adjustments from the uh, final audit, if that would help in um, GM McDonald's conversation. Thank you very much for that. Okay, uh, any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll move to the resolution. Moved by Sam McDonnell, second by Stephanie Jaworski. Be resolved that Staff Report 123-2022 be received and that the Council of the Township of South Hungary purchase a wheeled loader from BD Mill Riding for $100,000 plus HSD and that the funds be drawn from the Roads Equipment Reserve. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. And moving on to staff report 124-2022, Ms. McDonald. Thank you and through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a staff report requesting, I suppose, direction and guidance from council into how they'd like to proceed uh, with our current tractor, which is having its lease expired. So for the past five years, we've been leasing a John Deere tractor, uh, agricultural grade, to do a lot of our summer mowing. Uh, it's been yeah, this is the one that's been loading up our, our salt. Uh, we do a lot of shoulder retrieving with it. And sometimes we even chuck on our dozer part at the, I can't remember the attachment it's called. Anyways, it pushes snow. This one I expect to get a good discussion, but to uh, GM Hudson's point about the roads reserve being at 1.3 million, you may notice that there's a discrepancy in what I've shown as our current value. And that is because I removed the uh, single axle that arrived in February from the reserve, that transfer hasn't been made. So the value of my, my blue bar in my report is, you know, what is available after you take out that single axle purchase. Uh, so to, to this, our, our John Deere tractor, it's got five years of, of service on it. We do put uh, 750 to 1,000 hours on it each year. So that's, that's quite a bit. It is in the state that you'd expect from a, a tractor that's five years old. It is in desperate need of new tires. So if we were to purchase it outright, uh, we would be, you know, committing to a new set of tires at the five to seven thousand dollar range. It is our preference to continue on with a new five year lease with full maintenance. However, we've presented the options of a continuing on as we have been. It's a five year lease, no maintenance. So the township pays for all maintenance on on the tractor. Option B is a five year lease with the full maintenance included in that package. Option C is purchase of a new tractor or option D buying out the existing lease. And there's a, a cost comparison in there. So if we continue on leasing that comes out of our maintenance and operations budget. And so it'd be a small, small change. If we purchase either outright, if we purchase a new one or buy outright that comes out of our, our equipment reserve. So a variety of things for you folks to discuss. Thank you. All right, I'll go to Councillor Lane and Councillor McDonnell. The two resident tractor experts. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. And as you can uh, likely guess, uh, Councillor McDonnell and I have chatted about this already. So I'm likely gonna steal some of his, uh, his stuff since I happen to get uh, drawn first. But, but uh, kidding aside, uh, it's, uh, it's something that we do know something about. Um, and I was back and forth a little bit. I'm not a big fan of leasing a lot of equipment. 
but I am I'm going to recommend that we do lease this next one. And the reason, simple reason is we're doing 750 and then uh, Ms. McDonald just said 750 to 1,000 hours a year. So at the end of five years, you got 5,000 hours. That's a lot, enough hours on a tractor. I mean, they can go longer, but then you start getting into it, you know, a fair amount of repairs and so forth. So for the amount of hours we're doing, I think I'm going to, normally I wouldn't like for a pickup or anything, I would be, rather we buy, but uh, I'm going to agree that we maybe lease. I just want to put something out there and it maybe uh, Ms. McDonald has already done this or maybe they're in the process of doing this, <clears throat> but the market for tractors new and used has gone up considerably in the last few years. It's very hard to even find one. I'm in the process of uh, trying to look for one that I have a, a tractor that we're looking to change uh, next fall, not this December, but next year. And I'm already starting to work on it because it, the availability is, is tricky at some time. So because of the values have gone up, I just want to make sure that we're uh, looking at uh, the buyout on this tractor, I assume is the 170 that uh, he said. We want to make sure that the tractor, the track, it's not 170? No, no through you, Mr. Mayor, the buyout is 400, oh my gosh, 44600, 44,600. Okay. Under 50K. Okay. Yeah. What we need to do is we need to make sure that, I think the tractor's residual value is going to be higher than the buyout. And that's what's been happening with these leases because machinery was was quite a bit was priced a lot less five years ago when this was done. So we need to make sure that we get capture that residual. So either we buy the tractor out and then trade it in, or and but they'll you just end up doing it on paper. I've done it uh, before. Um, if we talk to a couple of dealerships, just say what's our tractor worth and have that taken right off the top for the lease. Um, but I want to capture that. The tractor possibly could be anywhere from fifteen to thirty thousand dollars more than the buyout. And I don't want the dealership to end up with that. I want the township to end up with that. So we just need to look into that before we sign anything. Okay. Thanks for that. Uh, we'll let Councillor Mantonell go. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'll agree with Councillor Lang. Uh, the residual value in that tractor is probably much higher than what the buyout is. And even considering what we've paid into it, so I, I think there's a value for the township to maybe, like Councillor Lang said, buy it out and maybe either trade it in on a trade. I do not think we should keep that unit pushing 5,000 hours, and we've seen lots of issues come through with it. <clears throat> I had the opportunity to talk to the one of the main operators on that tractor. Uh, it's starting to show a lot of issues with the death fluid, uh, which is an issue, unfortunately, I know very well about with uh, a unit we have at home. Uh, it's like a cat and mouse game. It could be a sensor somewhere in the exhaust and it could be anything, can cause any number of issues and throw any number of codes and is nearly impossible sometimes to find and fix unless shy of deleting the def on the, on the machine, which isn't necessarily recommended through the manufacturers. But uh, it's, it's not a unit I think we should buy out to keep long term. It's maybe a unit we buy out until a lease and a proper lease tractor is available to us that's another issue as well probably getting a lease tractor like a 61 uh, 61 10ms or a rock commodity as far as a uh, standard go-to uh, farm tractor for anybody running gears or something in the similar range that council line you'd be looking for like in the cases those are all tough tractors to come across these days and they're they're not sitting long on any of the lots if you if you see them if you drive around winchester or st polycarp so my, my option would be to to buy it out with the intention of either trading it or looking to sell it in some or, or, or benefit from the residual value that's left there. Okay, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you, through you, Mayor Warden. Uh, I'd, I'd, certainly you can delete death systems, but that's sort of like removing your catalytic converter. So there's certain issues about disregarding emissions legislation. So don't, typically can't do that. <laughs> certainly not as a municipality anyways um but uh yeah I, but i but i fully uh accept that there the, the implementation of uh nitrogen oxide treatment on tractors has not gone smoothly um but um that being said i'm sort i don't like leasing either but um i'd i the idea of the lease with the maintenance package to me uh, is intriguing because I do have a lot of customers that that's what they do. They have service agreements with they don't know they don't, they're not owning equipment. They have uh, service agreements uh, that cover a lot of these sort of these these exact things that we're talking about here, where they don't have the in-house mechanics to deal with it. 
and it puts the responsibility back on the dealer to make sure that that machine keeps working. So um, I was hoping, Ms. McDonald, that maybe you could give some more clarity because it seems like the additional cost there for having that maintenance, the maintenance lease is not, it's not a huge increase, uh, you know, in terms of basis but compared to what we pay annually in terms of maintenance on the on the unit. And while I very much think it's, it would be great if we could, like the idea of buying it and sort of uh, getting the getting that additional dollars to the township's account, uh, if we were to like then resell it, I still feel like that leaves us without a tractor because it sounds like these issues with trying to replace it are significant. So I don't know if the, the you know fifteen thousand or twenty thousand that the, might, the township might make is a one time, if we're really going to be uh, if we're not going to give ourselves more headaches in the end. Uh, in terms of availability of the unit, um, you know, just being able to get the work done, or you know, and replacing it. So, if you if you could, Ms. McDonald, just talk a little bit more about what that maintenance uh, agreement brings to us. Mm -hmm. And through you, Mr. Mayor, the so we requested a, a full maintenance package. Um, I don't have so we don't, right now we only have one quote, but if we were to go through this path, we, we'd request three and and see what they all say. Do you suppose I would have fleet? Full maintenance. So the full maintenance package includes, and of course it's all very long and wordy. Yeah, it just says maintenance plan and warranty for full term. But it is my understanding that it that it is if it breaks, we send it back to that particular uh, a dealer. And we would handle like small things that we normally like um, lights at the front. I, I can look more into it. I don't have a, a fantastic answer. Okay, so um, I just want to kind of wrap it up for general consensus. Uh, it's my understanding that council is uh, good with option B, but we also want to buy out the tractor uh, uh, to gain some residual value and the tractor buying it out may tie us over till the new one arrives. Uh, am I, am I, have I summed it up well? Yes, thumbs up. Sam? Yeah, just a quick comment. I did a quick look on Marketplace. Uh, I forgot to bring it up. I was trying to find the pictures earlier. Uh, uh, 4,000 hours to about 2,900 or 3,000 hours on the tractor, the same 6110Ms. They range anywhere from 85 to uh, 130,000 with a loader. So there's still lots of residual value there, almost double, if not more. Okay, perfect. So we can do option B and option D. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, I guess I'm um, an am clerk. Um, I just asked her a question, then I'll go back to you, Councillor Lang. Uh, we're we're eligible to select two options. You're on mute. Yep. I'm on mute. Um, okay, so you're asking if you can select two of the options. Yeah. So council is interested in moving forward with option B in regards to moving forward with a fully uh, maintained five-year lease on a new tractor, but we'd also like to purchase the existing buy out of $44,600 40, $44, and capture the residual value the, uh, as these vehicles have gone up in price. So we wanna do both, we wanna buy it and then eventually dispose of it once the new one comes in. Okay, yeah, so yeah, you can, you could do that. We can uh, just word the resolution in the minutes to reflect that. So if you, for this evening's purposes, if you select the two options that you want to proceed with, and then um, we'll, we can massage that in the minutes for your approval of the next meeting so that it reflects the direction you want to go in. Okay. Uh, Councillor Lang, you had your hand up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Yeah, normally this would all happen as, as one deal. Like you, you would just okay. you would tell, tell the dealership I'm buying it out. And they they would they would offer you you know a certain amount off the 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 total for the lease, which would decrease your lease payments on the next one, and then you would keep the tractor until you know because there's a chance that the next one won't come in by the time this lease is up. You would keep that one until the 
the other one comes in and then that dealership takes the tractor and, you know, I've done it before and it, it's all one deal. It, uh, they're usually very happy to do it. They know that you, you, you want to recoup that value, but they, they're going to offer you a, a price for it. Hope and, and they'll be hoping that they can make a couple of thousand dollars off it too. But like Sam said, they don't need to make 30 or 40,000 off it. Okay. So are we good with going with just option B and, and moving forward that way? And Ms. McDonald could maybe reach out to you, uh, either Councillor McDonnell or Councillor Lang, if, if uh, she has any further questions. Is that fair? Yeah, no problem at all. Okay. Uh, no final question to uh, comment to Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you, Three Mayor Warden. I, 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 um, I'm a little confused as to where we're going in terms of uh, the, the direction. I'm sorry that uh, I think I missed something earlier on about how there's two tractors now that we're talking about, whereas I thought we were just talking about renewing the lease on this one or sending that one back and getting a new one. Or if I'm under, if, I mean, I guess now what I'm understanding is we're gonna continue the lease on this one until we can get a new one because of supply chain issues. Is that, is that what's happening? Okay, so my understanding of it is, is that the buyout on this tractor is $44,600. It's worth a lot more than that in today's market. So uh, counts and thank you to Councillor Lang and McDonnell for bringing this information forward. So we are able to negotiate with the, uh, whatever company, uh, you know, sells and leases tractors that we should be able to get more money for the residual value. And so, Councillor Lang said it will all happen under one transaction. Uh, but yes, we're, we're only going to have one tractor once the new one arrives. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for my confusion. That is okay. I think the confusion that's there as well is we do rent a tractor to put specifically on one mower for the, we only need, the township only needs one tractor full time, but we do require a second one in the summer, which we tend to rent a, a, a snow tractor for, for, that's, for. That's, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to read the resolution and we're going to vote on it. Moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Rebecca Luck. Be it resolved that staff report 124-2022 be received and that the council authorize the general manager of infrastructure to option B, obtain quotes and enter into a five-year lease agreement for one comparable tractor and accessories with a full maintenance plan, including signing all relevant documents. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you very much for that discussion. And moving on to... Staff report. I know it's Ms. Mac, Mac, McDonald again. Staff report 125-2022, Design Award Glen Walter Water Tower. Okay, and thank you and through you again, Mr. Mayor. This is to bring forward an option for designing, for, sorry, for doing the design for our water tower. So we talked a little bit earlier through the staff report 7C. Um, about the, the funding that we've received. So this report talks a little bit about that funding again. So we have um, secured, oh goodness, here we go, $3.6 million between federal and provincial funding for a project that we've estimated is at about $4.9 million to complete. It is to do a uh, rehabilitation of these existing reservoir with a new and elevated water storage tank. So that, that's a water tower, including the replacement of 4,000 meters of existing water mains. So that, that encompasses many, the majority of our water mains through the Glen Walter area. Um, we have, I, I know that the big question here is the sole sourcing. So we do have the option to sole source through our, our procurement bylaw. In this case, the consultant that we're putting forward Ainley has successfully pre has been successful successfully pre-qualified through our engineering roster last year. So they are on our engineering roster. They are entirely qualified to do this work. Uh, their submissions to our open procurements have been technically strong. In this case, the delivery time frame is critical and Ainley staff have both the capacity and the time and the, the, uh, the breadth to do this work. Since this work includes both linear infrastructure, which would be the mains, and then more on the treatment side, so the, the water towers. Um, and then considering our funding requirements. So our start date for the funding requirements would be September 1. And then we have a 
three-ish years to, to get this like in the ground built. Uh, we've proposed a part A and part B, so splitting out the linear versus the more treatment -y side of things and proposed two, uh, two timelines for that. In accordance with our procurement bylaw, we have worked with Alien and Associates to pr prepare the project scope and we have negotiated with them via the design fees. Design fees are typically six to 8% in uh, county jobs. So like we'd be considered county jobs or if you go into the city, they can be upwards, you know, 20% when you throw in everything that go with, goes with that. So their, their fee estimate of $319,950 is roughly 6.5%. So it is in line with, with what we'd expect to see for design of a $4.9 million project. I, can't say, um, no, sorry. I'd just like to reiterate that, that Inley has, is, is very strong in this field and I, I wouldn't be putting forward a sole source if I didn't stand by it. So I am open for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you, through you, Mayor Warden. Uh, thank you, Ms. McDonald, for, for bringing this forward because I know it's keeping these projects on track. So if I'm to understand in this case, um, we're it's, uh, we're doing something that's allowed by our procurement um, by law, but sort of a little bit outside of the norm. But if I understand the main driver for us, or the reason we really need to look at it this way is really in terms of getting these critical delivery times. Is that the main driver for this? Thank you and through you, Mr. Mayor, that that is one of our main drivers. And I, the fact that they have the, the capacity to do it in the time frame that we need. So they would be preparing for the water tower. We are proposing doing a small um, schedule BEA since the master plan didn't talk about the height of the tower and these towers are, are visible and huge and worth doing a bit more public consultation to say, hey, this is where it's going to be and this is how big it's going to be. So that's on, on the water tower side and then it includes full, full design. So 30, 60, 90, 100 and, and tender preparation for both the water tower and the full linear, interest, linear infrastructure. Excuse me. Um, and Mr. Sege, who is on his honeymoon right now, if I can say that, did participate through all of these negotiations. Great. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, moved by Martin Lang, second by Sam McTonnell, be resolved that staff report 125 2022 be received and that the Corporation of the Township of South Langary enter into an agreement with Ainley and Associates Limited provide engineering services for water tower and water main design in accordance with their proposal dated July 28, 2022 for $319,950. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Moving on to staff report 130-2022, Ms. McDonald. Thank you. I believe this is my final staff report for the evening and through you, Mr. Mayor, this is to award uh, the bundled bridges project. So RFP 20, 2022, uh, it is following from the design work that council had approved uh, on my first day. So last November, 2021, we had two respondents, Dalcon Constructors and GIP Paving Inc. Uh, I note that GIP Paving Inc. was formerly Coco Paving in case you're wondering who these new folks are. Uh, our consultants, Macintosh Perry, reviewed both submissions and they were both fully complete and accepted. The pricing difference between them was substantial and Macintosh Perry and ourselves are uh, recommending award to the low bidder, Dalcon Constructors, for their bid of 487000 excluding HST. And the intent is to have this, uh, this work completed this fall outside of the, uh, I think it's Barn Sparrows nesting season. If you'll look at, this is a quick note, item number 12, I have my roads, bridges, and structures reserve. Uh, this is a note to something that I brought forward a few week, weeks ago. At that time, our, our so what's sitting in our reserve is at 2021 value. And the deputy treasurer and I have gone through our books and have found the additional 510 that we thought was missing. So our actual roads, bridges, and structures reserve is more healthy than we thought. So when I come back with my first line culprit award, um, hopefully next meeting, we can discuss and if you prefer to move that one out of my reserve instead of general we can certainly do it at that time I wasn't meaning to pull wool over your eyes a few weeks ago that's a sidebar but in this our reserve is quite healthy to uh to award this work and that's where it was intended to come from thank you okay great uh any questions or comments 
Seeing none, Sam moved by Sam McDonnell, second by Stephanie Jaworski, be resolved that Staff Report 130-2022 be received and that the Council of the Township of Suckling Area award procurement 20-2022 for five structure rehabilitations to Dalcon Constructor Constructors Limited as per their submission of $487,000 plus HST and furthermore that the Mayor and Clerk be authorized to sign all relevant documents. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. And I believe we are now at the uh, pulled items section. If you'll just allow me a second. Um, through you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Oh, I'm, I'm wrong. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, we have one more staff report, staff report 125-2022, Ms. McDonald, you have one more. Oh, goodness. Thank you. And through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe this is the beginning of our bylaw section. So yes. this staff report is bringing forward a bylaw to enter into the transfer payment agreement for the, uh, the water tower funding. So we've talked a lot about this, and this is the mechanism by which we would receive our uh, $3,645,967.60 worth of funding. Thank you. All righty, any questions or comments? Seeing none, moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Rebecca Luck, be it resolved that Staff Report 125-2022 be received, and that bylaw 52-2022, being a bylaw to enter into a transfer payment agreement with Her Majesty the Queen in the right of Ontario, as represented by the Minister of Infrastructure, be read a first, second, and third time, passed, signed, and sealed in open council, is second day of August, 2022. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, thank you very much. And this is a lot of pages, so one moment please. And the next staff report is a lockout policy, refrigeration plant, Ms. Servage. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so this policy that I'm bringing forward this evening is regarding the lockout procedure uh, that will take place in our refrigeration plant room at the arena. This is a common policy used uh, in this type of environment to ensure safety of workers and contractors. Um, this was also a policy that was brought up as a requirement through our recent TSSA site visit. Uh, so it's important that we move forward uh, in order to meet the requirements. This procedure um, outlines the protocols used for disabling powered equipment, machinery, valves, electrical cir circuits, uh, within the plant room uh, while work is being completed or something is being serviced. For example, if something's being worked on in the plant, a designated lock will be put on either a valve, machinery, et cetera, uh, with a labeled tag on it. Once the work is complete, the designated uh, person will be able to remove the lock when it's safe to do so. Um, so yeah, this is just a procedure that's uh, common among uh, different refrigeration plant rooms and other uh, other rooms that have machinery and equipment. So I'll leave it to council if you have any questions, um, but it's pretty straightforward. Alrighty, any questions or comments of members of council? Seeing none, moved by Rebecca Luck, second by Martin Lang. Be it resolved that staff report 127-2022 be received and that bylaw 53-2022 being a bylaw to adopt a refrigeration plant lockout policy be read a first, second, and third time, passed, signed, and sealed in open council the second day of August, 2022. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. And moving on to staff report 128-2022, I'll ask Deputy Mayor to uh, run this portion as I've declared uh, a conflict of interest. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Warden. So on the, this staff report 128-2022, I think I pass it over to Ms. Campo, our clerk, who is going to talk to us about road widening dedications. Go ahead, Thank Ms. you, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, and through you. Uh, the bylaw that's before you this evening is uh, essentially a housekeeping item. Uh, council sees uh, bylaws of this nature a couple times a year. Um, so oftentimes severance applications are subject to a condition that requires road widening to be deeded to the township. Um, and this ensure, helps us to ensure that all municipal road allowances where 
possible are 66 feet in width. Uh, the road widenings included in the bylaw before you this evening uh, are all as a result of approved severance applications. Uh, so subject to any questions of council, um, it's a pretty straightforward bylaw this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Campo. Um, are there any questions from members of council? Okay, seeing none, um, I'll go ahead and read the resolution. So uh, be it resolved that staff report 128-2022 be received and that bylaw 54-2022 being a bylaw to accept certain lands as road allowances within the township and to dedicate same to the public use as a public highway be read a first, second, and third time passed, signed, and sealed in open council the second day of August 2022. So all in favor? Okay. Carried. So. Just before we move on, just the... Um just note for the minutes, the mover for that resolution was Councillor Lang and the seconder, Councillor McNamell. I'm sorry, yeah, I don't have those, sorry. <laughs> you don't have the resolutions in front of you, so. <laughs> no, all right, okay, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, taking over, uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Uh, moving on to staff report 129-2022, Ms. Haley. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, Ms. Haley is uh, away this evening, so I'm going to speak to this report on her behalf. Thank you. Uh, so Council uh, will recall uh, receiving a request late in 2021 from a property owner requesting to purchase township owned land located on the west side of one Victoria Street. Um, and the purpose for the property owner making this request is to create a larger lot that uh, would accommodate a proposed secondary dwelling unit that would be attached to the existing home. Um, so the provisions of the sale and purchase of property bylaw have been followed and subject to council's final approval, staff is recommending that the township proceed with the sale uh, at a sale price of $15,593 with the purchaser covering all costs associated with sale and transfer of the land. Um, and the proposed sale price is based on the uh, appraisal received and additional discussions um, held by council at a closed session meeting. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for that report, uh, Madam Clerk. Are there any questions or comments of council? Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you, Ms. Campo. I just want to say, I think that this is a really, this is a fantastic story. You know, this is a, a ha Habitat for Humanity home that's now turned into a densification option within our uh, village. So I think it's a, it's a continuation of a good news story. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. That is very true. Moved by Sam Actonell, second by Stephanie Jaworski. Be resolved that staff report 129-2022 be received and that bylaw 55-2022 be being a bylaw to sell the land that is legally described as part of Block C, registered plan 26, being part one on reference plan 14R-6640 to Manon Brousseau for the value of $15,593 plus HST, be read a first, second, and third time, pass, signed, and sealed in open council the second day of August, 2022. And furthermore, that all costs associated to the sale and transfer of the land be paid by the purchaser. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. All right, now moving on to the consent items. Uh, 9B, departmental update, corporate services. Mr. Mayor, um, yes. before you proceed with the items for consideration, I just wanted to note that with our new procedural bylaw um, <clears throat> and the consent agenda and items for consideration, the order of resolutions has changed somewhat from what we're used to. So your next resolution in your package is to accept the consent agenda. And then procedurally, we would move to the items that we've moved to the next section in item 10. So if you just want to go ahead and read your next uh, resolution and then proceed into section 10 of the agenda. Section. So yes, yeah, section nine would be our consent agenda. So you have a resolution to accept that. 
And then we would move into the items for consideration, which would be formerly other business. So those are the items that were pulled to be discussed. Okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> it's, I'm an old dog, <laughs> hard to change. Uh, Stephanie, uh, moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Rebecca Luck, be resolved that the Council of the Township of South and Gary accept the consent agenda. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. All right, so now we're moving into uh, items for consideration. Uh, 10A, Health and Safety Training, Mr. Walker. Sorry about this, uh, Mr. Mayor, my uh, camera seems to be reversed on me here. There we go. I apologize. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, and through you. Um, good evening, members of council and members of the public. This is an information report on some of the successes regarding health and safety, as well as the training efforts since 2018. My role was formed in 2020 with a focus on training for all township staff, full and part-time, including our fire department members. It has been a success on all fronts as required uh, training has been monitored and scheduled for all staff when and where it is needed. It also ensures that uh, universal and job specific training is received by all employees. Regarding health and safety, before you in the agenda package is an information report that speaks to the updated health and safety policy and procedures manual. This manual was brought to council in 2018 and has recently been reviewed and updated. The Health and Safety Committee meets uh, every two months to discuss various health and safety concerns, training and recommendations to improve the health and safety culture within our workplace. You've probably noticed uh, new health and safety boards in all the township workplaces. These boards are a great way for employees to use um, as reference for health and safety information within their workplace. Training for both the uh, township and fire staff is ongoing and very successful. I've been uh, working with the United, County, uh, the United Counties of SDNG in North Glengarry for uh, township staff and the surrounding fire departments for our fire staff to ensure consistent and proficient training opportunities. Uh, one other training resource um, used by all staff is the uh, HR Downloads Program. This is a, an online portal for HR training for all staff. One of the benefits uh, of this platform is uh, annual up-to-date uh, HR training. Uh, health and safety uh, training has had numerous successes over this uh, and a strong uptake by uh, staff and volunteers. And I'm looking forward to the progress over the next few years. Thank you for your time and I'll answer any questions if you have any. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, uh, you're muted. My apologies. Uh, thank you very much for your report, Deputy Chief. Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you, Three Mayor Warden. Yes, thank you, Deputy Chief Walker, for your um, um, report. It's, uh, uh, it's nice to see how your role is able to bring, uh, you know, your focus beyond fire. You know, you're bringing that health and safety awareness and training and knowledge throughout the township. So that's, uh, I think that's a really excellent use of your role. And I, I'm also very happy to see, um, you know, that there's been collaboration with SDG in North Glengarry, because certainly, uh, you know, we have in-house expertise that not all other townships have. So I'm glad to see that we're uh, putting that, you know, we're, we're sharing resources and increasing efficiency. And, uh, you know, maybe that, the, and I'd be interested in the next time that you give this, uh, this report, I mean, this may be sort of going on to a bit of another topic, but in terms of like, you know, the data, in terms of the progress, in terms of the numbers of employees that are trained, and as we move with the new fire certification as well, to sort of give us a, sort of those data points on uh, where we're at in terms of uh, folks achieving, uh, you know, the, the amount of training that's been done, just to sort of put a little bit more, uh, a little bit more data around it. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Are there any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you very much for your report. And uh, moving on to 10, 10B resolution, Ontario Amber Alert System. Uh, I, have a, uh, I have a resolution in front of me without a seconder. Uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski had asked to bring this forward at our last meeting and Councillor McDonnell put his hand up first. So uh, you're okay to second that motion. Um, Deputy Mayor, did you want to add any uh, words before I read the resolution? No, thank you. You can go ahead. It's all there. All right. Moved by Stephanie Jaworski, seconded by Sam McDonnell. Whereas the Council of the Township of South Glengarry received and hereby supports the resolution passed by the municipality of Brighton on June 20th, 2022, concerning the Ontario Amber Alert Warning System. And whereas it is clear that there are need, there needs to be an addition the alert system to allow for law enforcement to send out an alert for vulnerable children who go missing under circumstances that do not involve an adoption, but there are they are at serious risk of injury or death. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Township of South Bungary urges the Solicitor General, the Commissioner of Ontario Provincial Police, and the Premier's Office to make the necessary changes to the Amber Alert System and create a new alert called the Draven alert, which will protect vulnerable children who have not been abducted, but are at a high risk of danger, injury, or death, and alert the public that they are missing. And that this both motion be sent to all municipalities across Ontario, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, Premier Doug Ford, the Ontario Solicitor General, and the Commissioner of the Ontario Provincial Police. All those in favor of the motion. Motion is carried. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, no, Councilor uh, McEnell, for seconding. All righty. So I think I'm correct procedurally to head on to 9B, Departmental Update Corporate Services. All righty. And that is... Yes. So uh, I brought this, I requested this uh, to come forward. Uh, um, uh, clerk, um, oh my God, Compo, my goodness, I'm having a minute here. I want to thank you uh, for bringing the statistics forward uh, on all of our online uh, uh, viewers, uh, our Facebook users. Um, I think it's, it's, it's great information for council to see that. I feel like uh, sometimes we think we're the only ones watching and yet we have a pretty steady uh, flow of viewers. So uh, thank you for bringing those stats uh, forward. And I was very happy to see that the uh, bike repair station got quite a few uh, shares so uh, or taps or whatever they call that. So I want to thank you for that. No problem. It's, a, it's always interesting to see through you, Mr. Mayor, the uh types of information that really gets picked up. I'll tell you, there's nothing that gets more shares and likes, well, not likes, but more shares than a, a lost dog or it's, it's things you wouldn't think that would be um, the most popular, but it's what really engages the community. So it's interesting to look at those stats and see, uh, you know, what's, what's really the com community is really interested in and uh, sharing. Yep. Thank you for that. Uh, 9G, I requested that to be pulled forward as well. Uh, I just wanted to uh, have council look at uh, the numbers compared to 2021 and 2022. And I would point out that if you go to the bottom, the permit numbers, there's not a lot of difference between the two, but the value in the construction is almost, it's, it's $8 million more. So it's just, uh, it really caught my eye and it, it really goes to show um, that we're in a good position because costs are gonna be going up uh, for the municipality. And uh, anyways, I wanted to thank the uh, CBO for this report. That's certainly uh, eye-opening in my opinion. Okay, that's all. 9J and then 9K, I believe it's, uh, Councillor Lane, or no, was that mine as well? Is this, I, I think it's mine. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Yeah, um, 
October 18th is the annual child care worker and early childhood educator appreciation day. And as a council and as a township, I'd like to recognize that and uh, do what we can in our township to encourage. We are desperately in need of more. Um, and, and I'm not sure if there's things that this council can do to uh, encourage that, to, uh, to, uh, to help the community. And the other thing is with the $10 day, day, daycare on the way, there's very few of our residents, I think, are going to benefit from that because most of our daycare is private. And uh, I, I don't know that that's going to qualify. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think we need to look into this and see if there's ways that we, can, as a council, as a township, could encourage some more. But as a start, I'd like to, uh, if, if we can, uh, maybe have something for next month and, uh, and to, uh, to, uh, to support uh, October 18th as, uh, as the day. Thank you. Yep, thank you very much for bringing that forward, Councillor Lang. Uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you, through Mayor Warden, and uh, certainly I, thank you, Councillor Lang, for bringing this forward, and certainly I, I support this as well. And to your point about what can we do as a municipality, um, you know, I, I think of uh, you know the South Glengarry Child Centre that's based out of the Williamstown Public School, and how uh, different school boards are very good at increasing the amount of. Um, or even the Upper Canada, you know, has certain had, has had big projects like at the Roxmore, the new Avonmore Public School, big project to increase the number, you know, the space allotted to uh, child care. That that is perhaps something. I mean, I, I, in that case, it's not a it's not public. It's public, not private. But uh, there may be some opportunities that way in terms of incre increasing the space that we can have through that type of program that has been done in other municipalities. So that might be a way that you know the municipality can lobby the, the school board. Just wanted to mention that. Yep. Good points, uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Are there any other comments or questions on that? Seeing none, I'll move on to item 9K. Letter uh, redistribution of electoral district for North Glengarry. As you'll all see in our council um, agenda, uh, North Glengarry has written a letter to us uh, stating that we uh, they'd like to realign the uh, electoral district with ours. Uh, as we're, you're all aware, uh, North Glengarry is the only municipality in SDNG that isn't part of SDNG on a provincial or federal level. Uh, they are aligned with uh, uh, Prescott Russell, uh, and I certainly would uh, like to support uh, their request to uh, have the lines redrawn. Uh, Councillor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thanks for bringing it forward. I, I agree 100%. I, it would simplify many things, and I'll just give you one example, like the Glengarry Federation of Agriculture represents Glengarry. But instead of having to deal with uh, two politicians, we have to deal with four. Uh, it just, everything is harder because, you know, it's split north and south where, you know, in Glengarry County, we have a lot in common and uh, it, it would be nice to have it as one. And I think whatever we can do to support this, I'm in favor of. Okay. Thank you very much. I couldn't agree with you more. Councillor McDonnell. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'd agree to that as well. I think it makes more sense if the United Counties are advocating to, again, to uh, two elected officials at the uh, upper tiers as opposed to four, as Councillor uh, Lang stated, and myself knowing the same with the GFA, constantly reaching out to, uh, to trying to read, find somebody to reach out to each one of these uh, elected officials can become cumbersome. And yeah, the, it, the United Counties should be dealing with uh, one set of uh, MPPs and MPs as opposed to multiple uh, ridings it makes more sense electorally and for uh, for the counties and, and uh, townships. Yep, uh, Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Thank you, through you, Mayor Warden. Uh, as what uh, our, my council colleagues have mentioned, you know, if, if there, there's a lot of good reasons why North Glengarry would want to do this. And certainly if this is something they're putting forward and we're good neighbors and we, we see the benefit, we should definitely lend our name to what they're doing. And in addition to how uh, there's, they're in a situation now where they're, 
it's it, it can't be more difficult in terms of lobbying. I think they're also in a situation where because of that, they, sometimes they end up being forgotten as well. They have, you know, sometimes they have difficulty getting a hold of, you know, their representatives depending on the situation. So I think it, uh, I think if they're part of SDG, it's going to make sure that uh, their needs and their concerns are, are, are always, always considered. So I'm in support. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, Madam Clerk, could you uh, bring a resolution forward at our next meeting to uh, formally support it uh, with a resolution? And um, uh, Sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor, just in, in reading the letter, um, I don't know if they're at the point where they require a resolution because they're saying we hope we can count on your support in the event that we proceed with this process and that okay. they'll notify us um, once they've made a decision. So I'm wondering if we're um, jumping the gun on a resolution at this point, or if you'd prefer to wait uh, to hear on their decision and if they require a letter of support or what they would require from us. Uh, okay, well, maybe we could just uh, reply in, in a letter stating that council discussed it and supports uh, their request and we'll wait, wait for further something like that, just acknowledging that we received their letter and council's in full support. Uh, let us know what we can do for you. Perfect. Okay. I'll, I'll prepare that. Thank you very much. And moving on to item 9M, uh, Councillor Lane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. The town of South Bruce Peninsula has uh, sent out a, a resolution or a you know, a, a notice to everybody that they are requesting the province to uh, help with the shortage of physicians. And uh, I mean, we all know that uh, you don't have to talk to too many people to find somebody that doesn't have a doctor and sometimes has a hard time finding one. And it makes quite a difference in your life if you have someone that you can actually phone instead of always just having to go to a clinic or go to the emergency. Everybody knows the, the issues at uh, emergencies these days. And even the clinics sometimes are backed up. Um, so I'd like to support it. I mean, I think it, we maybe even need to go further, but uh, we know there's quite a shortage in the nursing department as well. But uh, I think this, this resolution is speaking just to doctors, but I have no problem with supporting that because I do think we need to do it as a province what we can to, uh, to try to get more. Thank you. Yeah, couldn't agree with you more. Uh, uh, Councillor Luck. Thank you to you, Mr. Mayor. I would just want to uh, second what... Uh... Councillor Lang said and that, uh, well, basically, as he said, that uh, there's so many people without a physician or the ability to go see someone on a, a quick, um, you know, short notice and whatever we can do, I'm in full support. Thank you. All righty. And Deputy Mayor Jaworski. Uh, uh, thank you, Three Mayor Warden. Thank you, Councillor Lang, for bringing this forward. And, you know, the issue about how many students can get into medical school and also though there are you know students who actually want to work in rural areas who want to get into medical school and it would be great if there could be some sort of program where you know there's an in, uh, there, there's an incentive to get those folks in the system and have them tied to come back to our you know our communities when they do finally graduate because I mean, that's also an issue is that the, the medical programs are so long that once they establish themselves in urban areas, they don't come back. So, uh, and it's a particularly big issue for, you know, getting physician sort the physician shortage is a particular issue in Northern and rural Ontario. Yeah. Alrighty. So that's a great discussion. Thank you for bringing it forward. And I believe that is all on items for consideration. So I have a resolution in front of me, moved by Rebecca Luck, second by Martin Lang. Be resolved that council convene to close session at 9.13 p.m. to discuss the following item under section 239.2 of the Municipal Act 2001. Two, a meeting or part of a meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being discussed is F, advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, specifically legal advice. All those in favor of the motion, motion is carried. Thank you all for attending this part of the meeting and we will see